Buenas tardes chicos, ha dado comienzo a la Pardoscom, pero el show de anuncios y la previa del show de anuncios empezará en el canal a las 5 y el show de anuncios es a las 8, ¿vale? Así que aún queda bastante rato, pero creo que ha habido un panel que puede ser interesante en el que han entrevistado a la, a la CEO de Paradox, a la alta jefa, básicamente a la alta capo, y vamos a echar un vistazo mientras tanto, así hacemos tiempo... En teoría, como digo, abriré directo son las 4, 4 y media, así que calma, que aún no os estéis perdiendo nada. Todo está siendo un poco relleno, pero bueno, vamos a ver esta entrevista, a ver qué nos cuenta, ¿no? No sé quién es el de la izquierda, ¿vale? Maybe the strangest period of my life Gosh, or it, anyone's life. It perhaps. really has. It um, cannot be overstated. But mm. here we are again mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. PDXCon Remixed. Yes, very exciting. I'm super happy that we're doing this. Me too. Uh, Me again. too. Mm. So PDXCon is always obviously one of the most momentous events for us in any given year. Yes. So why is that? What does PDXCon mean to you? Mm. I think to me and I think actually the whole company uh, we have always been very close to our community from being ver a small uh, studio to now when we're a lot bigger uh, I think everyone in the company really really enjoys talking to our fans and our, our players and uh, while I think that we do it a lot on forums and uh, you know uh, social media. Bueno, dice que parte de Paradox integral es estar cerca de los fans y de ahí pues temas como los días de desarrollo o hacer esta esta convención para estar cerca de los fans, ¿vale? PDXCon. The first one was journalists uh, only and then it's been two uh, with players. Uh, I missed Que ya ha habido muchas convenciones de Paradox con Periodistas solo, y ahora llevan como dos, esta es la tercera creo, con jugadores también, con la comunidad viniendo. A physical proof of what it is we're actually doing. You know what I mean? And of course, this year it's different, remixed because it it's is. digital. It's very different. Uh, y que es diferente este año porque es digital, ¿no? Que no, no es física. A, a flow of uh, connections while digital uh, still during this year as well. Right. Well, mm -hmm. so so how are we doing that? Because again, I, well, I agree very much. There's no substitute for real life for having that energy of the audience when you're up on the stage making a great eh, sweeping puntos de valor para el entrevistador que igual aunque tengan todo pactado que seguramente esté toda la conversación pactada no tiene unos papelitos that we're hoping to achieve igual hay un teleprompter por ahí I mean we're going we're using a lot of tools right like discord twitch obviously the chat uh, you can uh, post questions as you go along But I think it started before that, that the whole, the setup of this version of PDXCon is uh, very interactive in the sense Algún that día, chicos, people have been able, yo seré este able to um, send aquí in sentado, suggestions on topics, but señora. also actually create their own panels and, uh, and their own content for this. And, and bueno, que a gracias a medios como Twitch, como Discord, pues uh, pueden hacer way, como la life, convención más cercana a los jugadores. Of, uh, getting everyone involved who has a lot of passion for our games. So to me, I, I think that's going to be really interesting to see. And also, even though I really hope and, and uh, plan that we go back to doing this in a physical form when it's possible, I hope that we keep a lot of those elements and uh, broaden, uh, broaden the audience, but also broaden the engagement and the involvement from people going forward. I, I can't wait for that either, yeah, honestly. Yeah. This Remixed, I think, will make this my seventh PDXCon. Yeah, so it's, you've done more than it's, that. Well, it's been mm. quite a number, mm. but we obviously make the accommodations we make owing to the reality yeah, we yeah, live yeah, in. Absolutely, yeah. And that has and kind you of... you know, it does create opportunities. It, Sorry to interrupt. No, so please. I, think, I do think it's quite cool that it's... Uh, Uh, we are able to do this in a slightly different way and it's uh, well, yeah. broader in that sense. Que no es necesariamente peor una Paradox con online que esto habilita otras cosas para hacer. Showcase as a member of our community, there's uh, there's a lower barrier to enter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
and I think we've seen I mean not that the the pandemic has been great uh, well, not no. definitely not <laughs> but it has had uh, it's helped us move some of our our events and I like I mean you work a lot with the press right Certainly. a lot of the press uh, events these days they have been digital and while I don't think we will have only digital I hope we won't have only digital events it, it is a very good uh, way to combine and you know save some uh, air miles and uh, well, time certainly. and open it up to more people who can join bueno que por ejemplo la hora de hacer eventos de prensa que el hecho de hacer los digitales pues hace que se ahorren pues muchos viajes que se abren a más gente no es necesariamente mal this is probably the most different year that not just the world has had but paradox as a member of say the world uh, has had and you've been the one to lead us through it so simply compared to any other circumstance at Paradox, besides the obvious, what has been different about Paradox um, this year? Well, I mean, I think, I, I, first of all, I, it's worth pointing out that we are quite lucky compared to many, many, many types of uh, businesses that we have, uh, 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 our games are still something that people want to play even though there's a pandemic going on, but I, I think I think a lot of that has been difficult has been inwards. So uh, we've employed a lot of people who've grown a lot this uh, past year and a half. And, and to me, the culture of a company is really very important. It's and empleado a mucha gente nueva. It builds trust and it builds taking responsibility, everything. Uh, and, and that's really difficult to build and grow and evolve when you never meet up. And I think, I mean, we've seen different waves, right? And it's, I think it's become increasingly difficult over time. So, so uh, I actually, I can't wait to go back. And, and we are planning on uh, starting to go back everywhere on, in all of our offices uh, in the fall. Que tienen planeado volver a todas las oficinas, pero... So then it's going to be a bit quicker, ganas, so it, it depends bueno, on where we are. Pueda, but, no? but to me, that's, that's like, a, the, if I put one word on it, I would say the culture of the company is like, it's such a big part of who we are. I think it's probably a big part of most companies, but for us, it's truly the essence, right? So, so that I'm very. Dice la, que la cultura de la compañía es muy importante, and, uh, es esencial. Uh, and having big town hall meetings in person and, and all of those things, and 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 then if we look at the development and the games, it's clear that it is it is a lot more difficult to be creative when you have to ping someone on Slack all the time r rather than just turning around and asking someone for, you know, some input or favor or feedback. Uh, so so it's, uh, I do think it's going to help our, our creative processes as well to move forward. Well, sure. And there have obviously been a number of obstacles, some of which have been more obvious than others. Yeah. It hasn't all been uh, bad, of course. During this last year, we had, I think, one of our most successful, if not the most successful, release in the company's history with CK3. Yeah, that was fantastic. And it was such a, such a boost for the whole company, of course, to, to have that. Que el exitoso lanzamiento de CK3 fue un impulso muy grande para la compañía. Supongo no solo en el tema económico, sino también, joder, la recepción tuvo que hacer que los desarrolladores se motivaran un montón, tío. That you think that, that CK3 still managed to be this wonderful collaborative, creative, and obviously high quality product that ultimately it was? Yeah, I, it's a great question and, and you can compare it, obviously. I do, I do think one thing that was very evident was that the development had come far when we all went mm. home. So it, was, it wasn't a, a done game or a done deal when we went home, but the teams had uh, done a wonderful job of really getting everything together and then it's all about it's about polish 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 in the end right so and and they were incredibly efficient and then you could see that yeah, okay good it's like when you sit at home and you're actually not disturbed the problem is almost you work too much rather hmm. than too little so so you know it did become a very good flow there where it was more about making sure that people stay on the right side of uh, how many hours you work Uh, so, so so sobre cómo fue el trabajo de final de Crusader Kings 3, uh, so no? other DLCs that we did at, who, or, that were late in production, etc. That, you know, super efficient. It's Creo que lo más interesante que podría comentar es esto, en plan, ¿por qué tras casi un año de Crusader Kings 3 todavía no hemos tenido ningún DLC? ¿Qué ha pasado para que el desarrollo de DLCs y de contenido para Cicatas sea tan lento con el exitazo que fue? 
Y, y sobre todo, ¿dónde, ¿en qué están trabajando los desarrolladores de Paradox? ¿no? Creo que esto es interesante que lo comentar. Of getting everything together, you know, our most of our games are very system driven, and it's very much about getting everything together in the end and making sure that all the pieces fit together and the systems uh, play together, balancing all of that stuff. And that, and I think the the uh, the further we had come in whatever project we talk about, when everyone went home, the uh, easy is the wrong word because it's never easy to make a game, but it, the 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 more. Um, uh, Uh, likely it was for the team to be able to just really push through and polish in a good way. Yeah. Fair enough. Mm. And, well, there is, of course, the flip side to that question, not to shy away from the difficult topics mm. Mm. here and now, but we've also had some releases uh, this year and last year th whose quality was perhaps not where we wanted yeah. it to be. No, and that's... And I'm some delays <sighs> and some other, yeah. some other news that's yeah. probably been difficult to yeah. stomach. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's, I mean, there are so many aspects of, of doing uh, releases that aren't to the fans' liking, if I put it that way, for, for whatever reason that is. And, and I, I think, first and foremost, I think about the fans who <laughs> pay and uh, want to play something, and of course, we, don't, we never want to disappoint, right? Uh, and then it's very much about the teams who build this, because the intention is never to release something that's bad. Uh, and then you can ask, but how can you even do that? And that's a very good question, and it's also something that we're continuously working on. How do you balance making sure that you have the quality you need and making sure that we're on the level that, because we're also a larger company now, so there are also different demands coming, which is totally fair and, and, uh, and the way it should be. Bueno, que Paradox ha crecido mucho, hay diferentes demandas para la compañía ahora, se exige más calidad y, y por tanto los desarrolladores tienen que tratar de llegar a ella, ¿no? Y es complicado. A great advantage to go back to the offices and to meet up more frequently, but of course that's not the only part of this. It's also about all the, you know, I mean, game quality is really about the expectations of the of of everyone who wants to play. Uh, is the, the is the game there? Is it fun? Is it great? And then can you play? Is this is the quality there? So it's all of these three you have to match and balance. So so it's definitely something we're working on and we'll continue to work on, and I think we'll always work on. Porque es también muy really difícil. So, uh, so it's, it's, it has to always be top of mind, I think. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, so you touched on something very briefly, which has honestly been a, something I've always wondered and wanted to ask. Mm -hmm. Because one thing that really didn't slow down during the last year, and something, it's a trajectory we as a company were on for a while now. One thing that really did not slow down at all, at least to my vision, is our growth. Yeah, as a company yeah. and just since, you, just since you have sort of taken already. the reins yeah. well not sort of you have taken the reins <laughs> let me be very clear we are now i think we we grew by two or three new studios just in the last year alone yeah. we're nine and studios, creado dos or tres think, studios in the last year yeah that's true and like what is both for you as the ceo and for paradox as a wider group not just the main difference, but how, how does one keep up with that? Simply because we, we are by no means the same company we were two, three years ago. Yeah, I, I, it's also a really good question. It's something that I think about a lot, of course, and work with a lot. And, and one of, I think we come back to culture again, that it's about when you add a lot of, uh, if it's a whole studio or if it's a... Uh, que a ver que, en people. qué están trabajando los estudios de Paradox, One tío, porque llevan muchos fundados que no han sacado nada de lo que importan y cómo queremos hacer cosas. Y eso realmente ayuda. Y that it doesn't necessarily mean the same thing. A one word can mean different things to different people. So it's also about defining, okay, what does it mean and, and how, we, how we, we work with things. Uh, so that's a, that's also ongoing work the whole time, uh, and and I mean I think that we were in a uh, we did a huge um, conference for everyone who worked in the company when we were in Berlin, right? So one and a half years ago, 
and it would very much, I would very happily do another one of those. It's a great way of getting everyone together and getting everyone to sort of see things in, in the same way, and especially now when we've added so many people. Uh, so, so that's one aspect of it. And the other aspect of it is just practical things. Like I can't, I don't know everyone. I can't go around and talk to everyone. I wish I could. One thing that uh, helps is that our studios tend to be fair, not small, but they're not huge. So whenever I go to a studio, it's quite easy and quite relaxed to just chat to everyone. Uh, I, I mainly spend my time in the head office in Stockholm. It's quite big here. So here it's more difficult. So, but I do always walk around the office. One of those things that is just then I meet someone. Pues está hablando un poco de cómo es la vida en las oficinas, ¿no? Dice que los estudios no son necesariamente muy grandes, pero han crecido un montón. Entonces que no puede conocer a todo el mundo, pero básicamente pues intenta entrar uno con todos. Pues que puede. Notice that I get a lot of emails or suggestions from people on in various teams. So to me, that's a sign that there's like an open conversation, which is, of course, very much our culture. So it's, it's about finding things that we can build on even when we grow that supports doing, for example, that or other aspects of the culture. Well, has that, how have you managed to keep that at least I get to meet and interact with everyone at the company, especially in the last year? Because with, with the situation being what it is, we have fully three studios of colleagues now who I've never even yeah, met in no, person. Yeah. I've been to, uh, out of the new studios, I've actually been to both uh, Ice Flake uh, in Finland and uh, Tinto in uh, Barcelona. Uh, and I'm planning now with Benjamin, who heads up uh, Playroom, to go to Paris uh, in the summer. Uh, so I have been able to go and, and, and see them, even though, of course, it hasn't been trivial to, to travel. So it, it's... It, it works, but of course it's much more inconvenient uh, than normal. And, and then we've always had this quite open um, uh, environment, I think, where everyone can talk to everyone. I realize it's definitely not the same, especially not when you're new and you don't know me. But, but it's, uh, we, have f we have monthly news, which is a forum that is broadcast like this, kind of. Uh, where there's always like a Slack channel open and, and I, I feel like there is quite a lot of interaction in that and people actually dare to ask questions and, and I do get follow up afterwards from, uh, from many people. So, so and that to me is something that it really needs to be encouraged, not just from me, from anyone who's like a studio manager, anyone who who's, has a job that they want to share about. We also have our lunch and learns that I think are pretty cool that we used to do in the offices. Now they're digital, so they're almost better now when it can be any topic, it's a lot of stuff about dinosaurs, I can say, but <laughs> there's also <laughs> other, other uh, more close to what we do. Her stuff feels very attacked, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but you know, so there are these little tools and things that, and, and in that sense, I also think that we, we were maybe a little bit helped by being a very digital digital company or from Me a company a so we were used to Slack and, and those things. So, of course, it was... I'm not going to say it was easy for us to flip, but we did switch from one day to another. We moved everyone home, and uh, that actually worked. A bit bumpy in the beginning. Me preguntas a qué punto da equipo a los desarrolladores Paradox, porque solo suelen hacer muchas empresas. Lo llevables pasta para comprarse ordenadores, tablets, micros, teléfonos, o sea, teléfonos, ratones, etcétera. Con la el desplazamiento hacia las casas, ¿no? I think monthly news is a great example where it used to be broadcast from one office and everyone was in the audience there and now it's completely digital uh, and I think it's better now and I think that it works especially because we have people in many different com uh, countries time zones it's not the same you have to be able to watch it whenever it's good for you rather than when it's broadcast so that's one example uh, wh one thing that we worked with before as well but we have this uh, en verdad no piensas si dirigir una empresa así grande tiene que ser jodido en plan no solo de saber de economía sino de gestionar empresas tío tratar con mucha gente tener claro hacia dónde quieres ir la estrategia tiene que ser una locura que alucinas en plan yo no podría ni recordar good tool for me because everyone answers uh, a bunch of questions every month I think it's like 15 20 questions and we've had specific questions on the pandemic but there it's also about everything and I read 
pretty much all of the comments. And that's been a good way for me to keep uh, like the, a little bit of the temperature on what's going on and what are people happy about, less happy about, etc. Not just around the pandemic, but things that can come from that. Uh, and of course, that's something we had before, but it's still those digital tools that make it quite easy to follow up. Because I also, I'm also aware that not everyone tells me exactly what well. they feel, <laughs> which I mean, I think most people can, but I don't think it happens, and it would be naive of me to think that it does. Mira, aquí es bastante realista ella que dice que ningún empleado le cuenta realmente cómo está y no puede pensar que lo hacen porque sería naif por su parte y es interesante, ¿no? Porque obviamente ella es la jefa, ¿no? No le van, no le pueden decir la verdad y tiene que tratar con eso, ella, ¿no? En plan de tener eso en cuenta. ¿Será esto agua con gas? Beben agua con gas los suecos. No lo sé. Supongo que sí. Creo que es más difícil de lo que pensaba que sería. Hmm. I think that would be the honest answer. No, I'm not that I thought about, okay, what would happen if there's a pandemic and well, everyone... Es mierda el agua con gas. Eh? Aprovecho para dejar el detalle. But it's, uh, um, I think that at least my experience is that our uh, teams and our staff are... Uh, suffering is a very strong word and, and maybe a little bit exaggerated, but... Whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, whether you like having a lot of downtime and quiet around you when you work, most people actually uh, benefit from seeing others e every now and, uh, and again. And, and you know, I, I noticed that there is a, a sense of... Um, uh, most people want to come back. Most people... Oh, no, a lot of people don't want to come back exactly to how it was before. But there is a clear view on, and uh, maybe it's not right to say that it's more, I, it's maybe in many ways it's actually easier than I imagined it would be because the digital tools work very well and they've really improved. And we don't, we have fewer of the, hmm. the guy who had the cat on his face. <laughs> <in the laughs> yes. I don't know if it was Judge, him, yes, it was, honestly, yeah. I'm, I'm not a cat. <laughs> but, but, you know, so, so in that sense, it's perhaps easier than I could have imagined. But to me, it's uh, I, I really miss uh, hanging out with people around the coffee machine and uh, like the, in the, our team in Seattle, they go to um, they have this coffee place around the corner and they go like every day they go for a coffee run and it's really nice when you're there and it's like who wants to come for the coffee run? And it's really a drive-through and they walk up to the place and everyone's annoyed. <laughs> that, no, they're super nice. Okay. There, but, but you know, it's like those things that that's also what builds. And they have they also have like a hamburger competition between different hamburgers. Those being part of those things, like of course you can do it digitally, but so it's it's not just the work, it's also the social uh, okay. eh, para ella, o sea, tiene cosas buenas el estar trabajando y todo digital, pero que hay como ciertos elementos que quieras que no son mejores eh, eh, físicos, sobre todo elementos sociales. Yo que sé hacer competiciones de hamburguesas o echar un café o hablar en la máquina del café. Uh, just as a, as a personal note, uh, how have you kept up with, you know, your own social life and what you would do, well, for fun yeah, during ordinary yeah, circumstances yeah. compared to how it's been now? I, yeah. I used Super to travel difficult. an awful lot more yeah. than I do now. Yeah, and I I'm mean, looking forward to doing it again. Yeah, that, the traveling, to a certain extent, I guess, I'm probably going to travel a little bit less than I did before because I used to travel like crazy. Uh, but. I'm also thinking about all the all the people who have moved from pretty much in any of our offices. People have moved from maybe in Sweden more internationally, but in the other offices also from different parts of the country. So you know, a large part of the everyone's complete social life is here in the office, right, or around the office. So that's also become a lot more difficult. Luckily, we have a lot of uh, there as well. We have a lot of help from people being used to Discord and, uh, <laughs> and those sure. types of things, but it's still still uh, difficult. I mean, the board uh, board game, it's... Oh, well, don't get me started. No, yeah. I know. I mean, I know. Mm. yeah. We have, for everyone in the audience, we have, we have loads of meeting rooms here, 
and the, uh, yeah. pretty much all of them are full in the evenings. Yeah, uh, big people, giant tables. Yeah, with people playing uh, board games or role playing. Yeah. Qué guapo, tío. Uh, Dice que por las tardes no, se llenan no, las salas de reuniones de gente jugando a juegos de mesa y tal. De la empresa que hago ahí, eso, tío. I think it was maybe with the bank. Uh, it was someone external anyway, and then someone knocks on the door and they're like, we booked this room now for us. I'm like, okay, okay, I have to leave now. So <laughs> it wasn't me, was it? No, I don't Okay, think because I know I've done that to yeah. other people. And I was like, okay, yeah, we're, I'm going to take my bank meeting somewhere else. De todos modos, tío, pienso, eh, no sé qué pensaréis vosotros en esto. Al final, aunque sea por diversión y sea en teoría en tu tiempo libre, en plan, no sé si es durante un rato que se pone a casa o es como tiempo que tienen predefinido para pasarlo en compañía y, y mejorar como el trabajo en equipo y todas estas cosas, pero a mí me mataría bastante, o sea, quiero decir que tiene sus cosas buenas, no lo dudo, pero en plan, estar tantas horas en la oficina, ¿sabéis? En plan, tío, es como, ya has hecho tu trabajo por la mañana, me quiero ir a casa, ¿sabes? Si quiero hacer otras cosas, quiero hacer mi vida, al final, hacer tanta vida en la empresa, ahora bien que si es como parte de horas de trabajo pero que están destinadas a eso, me parece de puta madre, o sea, ahí no tengo ninguna duda, pero no sé, es como pienso en los japoneses, ¿no? que están ahí todo el día en la empresa y, y cuando terminan tienen que ir como a echar copas y tal con los jefes como para quedar bien y no se atreven a hacer otra cosa y... tío, me da como mal rollo esas cosas, ¿no? En, aunque de todos modos el mundo escandinavo, hasta donde yo sé, está como muy bien el tema laboral, a nivel de no solo bien pagado, sino que también como que son respetuosos con tu tiempo, eh, son muy detallistas en el sentido de que Paradox, por ejemplo, durante la pandemia a la gente que estaba trabajando en casa durante el periodo de trabajo pues les han pagado eh, las comidas, en plan les enviaban la comida a domicilio, eh, les pagaban rollo el wifi y una parte de la factura de la luz, porque... Eh, la empresa entendía como que eso era parte, cosa que tenían que pagar ellos que eso en España, una cosa así no se ve ni de coña, tío, y eso en cierto modo se puede decir que honra Paradox pero, obviamente habría que darlo por sentado a las empresas estos días ¿no? pero, joder, no sé en plan de que esas cosas me dan a mí un poco de mal rollito aunque no dudo que puede tener sus cosas buenas, ¿no? Oh, yeah, funny. I mean, yeah, but I mean that's also very much our culture, right? It yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. is, and mm -hmm. it's it's definitely. Dice que es parte de la cultura de empresa. To keep up with. Yeah. Uh, as o sea, también entiendo que no obligan a nadie a ponerse a jugar a juegos de mesa, vale, será como algo opcional. Like to think y, they y are very much into board gaming themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I I I back a lot of games on Kickstarter, which we're yeah, doing yeah. these days. Yes, and me too, quite a few. Uh, ours uh, and some others as right. well. Right, yeah. but. You know, you back you back these games back in 2017-18, and they say, "Great, you'll get them, you know, early 2020." Yeah. And now they're just collecting dust. Yeah, yeah. And you have a collection of well, like a yes. Yeah. Jesse has like hundreds of board games here in the office. Hundreds is an exaggeration. Okay, but, but loads. Yes, <laughs> it, enough enough that it is it, an entire. Pues ver una foto de la estantería yeah. que tengan de juegos de mesa debe ser una cosa colosal. What what have you been doing just to like just, socially? Yeah, you mean? to socially been, to kill time. What do you play in these days? Uh, the, uh, ¿A qué juega la presidenta uh, de Paradox? I'm, I'm playing some of our games. I've always been like a management uh, sucker, so I, I play Cities quite a bit, and I play Surviving Mars. I've actually gone back to playing Surviving Mars a bit more. Um, and then I've been playing lately. I've been playing this game called Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Oh, do you know that one? I I do. I haven't yeah. played it myself, but I know of it. No, it's a first person. Yo sé de su existencia, pero no sé ni de qué va. Games they make me a little bit seasick. Mm. Uh, but uh, but I really like uh, like I I like very very far from what we do. <laughs> I like lin story driven uh, linear games uh, uh, quite a lot. So it's uh, I look for those. Uh, play them. But I, but I also. Uh, And cities, uh, both cities and surviving Mars really, uh, I enjoy because uh, you can make it really pretty and, uh, and enjoy it. So yeah, I play those. And then um, uh, on the grand strategy side, I've, I've actually mainly been playing uh, CK3, Wh getting into it. I find it, I do. I le pega, tío, jugar al CK3. No sé por qué. Veo a esta señora y digo, le pega jugar al CK3. Easy to get into as far as you know, they would call them grand strategy no, if they were. True. If they were approachable <gasps> strategy, <gasps> not, not that our games yeah. are unapproachable, mm -hmm. but what do you find is your play style when you play CK3? 
Do you, uh, do you play I, as a, a small tribal ruler or a grand uh, empress? No, I would say I'd, I'm more focused on the small, and I, I stick to building from... Uh, and I'm not so uh, bothered with uh, ruling the world. Or I've, I've, I mean, I've, I, I guess it's really... Eh, arroba Will Moran, esta chica... Not gonna say, a lot of people cadres. enjoy with CK3 that the events can really throw you back and forth, and that... So it's, uh, I, I kind of play by the events, if I put it that way. Uh, Fair enough. Mm. Uh, more executions than we have at the office, or should I be worried? <laughs> or <laughs> yeah, I should always be worried. Well, when it, the first time I played with um, the first time I played CK2, I became this uh, hedonistic uh, cannibal. Uh, yeah, I was like, a, uh, but I had fun, so it was good. It was great. Okay, long as uh, long as eating uh, subordinates remains. Uh, yeah, it's against, only in the game. Against local law, yeah. I will be comfortable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, so, in terms of what to look forward to, uh, both in the in the year to come, with hopefully vaccinations continuing to roll out as they have, and just this weekend with PDXCon, what are you excited for? Uh, I'm excited about the announcement show tonight. Yo también tengo ganas de eso de anunciar. They're just Mike. They're Mike. Uh, and I'm actually hosting it, so that's a huge honor, of course. Um, and then uh, at the award show. I'm Hombre, si no lo haces tú, like, Eva, ¿quién lo hace? There are, there are a sabe. lot of panels. Um, uh, Veremos paneles, ¿eh? Vamos a ver bastantes, no todos, porque algunos no me llaman la atención, pero buena parte. When they talk about how they uh, adapt our games, I think that's pretty cool. I think it's the kind of the essence of what we do, right? We, we have this, we make the games, you create the story. And I think the modding is uh, uh, a very large part of that. You don't, you don't have to do or use mods for it, of course, but do it's you? still... Uh, I once, John Wadsworth, who works here in the company, he helped me turn all of Stellaris pink. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it by myself, though. But no, but I, but I don't. No, I don't play with that many mods, and that's why I think that's gonna. Mm. That would be interesting to to hear a bit more about, like, what's the reasoning behind it, and and, uh, and how do you build on it? Because it that's also, of course, a very complex addition to the games, right? So it's that that's that's gonna be cool. And then if we look uh, at the year, uh, going back to the office. Yeah, and getting you know getting a flow going again and getting people because I think that's going to also be a, a, a long journey to get people to feel. Yo para ha sido capaz en un año de sacar su mejor producto que ha sido CK3 y su peor producto que ha sido Leviathan para el cuadro. Ha sido pisos. And then suddenly you're supposed to just go back out in the world again. It's going to be, I think well, that's going to be a journey as well. Well, as you said, I mean. On some degree, yes, when work from home was implemented, we flipped a switch and one day that mm -hmm. was the norm, but we didn't adapt to that norm for quite some time. Yeah, what, no, it took a while. What do you think will, I mean, well, I guess I should ask, what, how, how can we best return to, to what we had, or at least the new version of what we want? What do you think will be the important steps to get uh, that that's going? A, that's a really good question. We're talking about, like, on a daily basis at the moment uh, in the management team. Um, I think I, I've been super clear the whole time that we are not going to be a company that says we can work from home forever. Uh, and that's uh, uh, and that's really to prepare people to know that, okay, it's, we're going to go back. Es que mucha gente a la que han contratado they, durante este tiempo solo ha trabajado a distancia. And we had when, 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 uh, 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 when the numbers were no? much, much, much lower last summer, we had a system where anyone could come into the office. You just had to sign up on a list. And, and I think that will probably be step one. And then we do it a little bit more and more. And of course, we have to follow what the instructions from all the governments are, right? I mean, we're not going to go completely rogue <laughs> yet, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, uh, no, but it's, so it's, it's going to have to be a step by step approach. Yeah. Fair enough. If you could. If, assuming this time next year, things yeah. have returned to a level where um, we can, I'm sorry, I'm, the I'm being given the time that we should wrap it up. Okay. It's uh, so nice to chat. Well, it is. I've been enjoying <laughs> our conversation. I'm sorry to have to <laughs> cut it short. But thank you uh, to those of you who've been joining us and to you, Eva, for your candor. And I'm Thanks. very much... Thank you. for And enjoy the weekend. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. PDXCon is next. Bueno, pues me ha dicho mucho interesante, un poco de insight de la empresa, de cómo han vivido este año. Y nada chicos, eh, abriremos directo 
a las aproximadamente espera que no sé contar tío cinco horitas aproximadamente abriremos directo y, y prepararos que se vienen cositas chicos venga, pasad un buen día y nos vemos en un ratillo, chao chao